What's up guys, let me ask you this question. What is the difference between an amateur DJ mix and a professional DJ mix? And you know what I'm talking about when you tune into somebody's podcast, right? All right, guys, before we get into this video, let me cut to some business real quick. I just want to say thank you to all the supporters and the people who watch my videos. If you enjoy the content I'm putting out, please hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification thing next to it so that way you don't miss any episode. They come out every Monday and Friday. And the goal of this is to just share knowledge about music, my passion for it that can connect to your passion for it. I'm going to take my experience of creating my own podcast for the past three years and share with you what I've had to learn on my own, so hopefully it'll answer some questions that you need in order to make sure your mixes sound professional. Let's go. All right, so here what we're looking at is my Logic Pro file that I have, and I do a save as every time, um, and what I do is I import my mix into this. Now, let me just give you an overview of what we're looking at here on the screen. So at the top here, obviously you have my mix that I imported in. And then what I do here is I have these markers at 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, etc., to go through the timeline. So uh, one trick that I would advise you, and these are in place so that I know where I can kind of put my drops that I've done. Now, you may be asking a question, how do you know when to put your DJ drops? One recommendation that I do have for you is to not put your DJ drops as you're playing and recording your mix. Instead, as you're recording your mix, write down times that you feel like a DJ drop would be good based on a break or maybe a dropout, um, some type of part of a track or during a transition. And I'm going to show you an image right here of kind of how I notate my DJ drops. That top of the timeline here helps me guide so that I know if I'm going to input one of my uh, DJ drops, I can kind of find a marker relatively quickly. Now, here's my mix at the top. And what I do is here on the side, you'll see here are all my DJ drops. Um, I have my welcome, you know, kind of gives an overview of the podcast. And I have different options of that. Um, I had a recording here. My dad was in town. He did a little intro so you can change it up. And then all these other ones are just clips of... Uh, DJ drops that I want to put within my mix, okay? And where you get your DJ drops, you can either do them yourself. I went through someone who was awesome on Fiverr. Fiverr's a great place to go and get stuff like this because it's not expensive and you get to type in, you know, exactly what you want to hear uh, and then the type of promotion you want. And that's the great thing about having your DJ mixes for your podcast is that it's a great promotional outlet for people to find you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, what have you. So this helps me stay really organized and I have all of my drops here on the left. And what I can do is I can just grab a file here. So say if it's a subscribe one, I can grab this file, you know, copy it. And then if I needed to put it over here, I can just come over here paste it around the time that I needed to and then uh, unmute it or whatever happens and then you're all set. So that's my that's my advice there because it just makes it easier and then boom, when I'm done with the session and I've exported my mix, all I do is highlight these and hit delete and they're gone and then I just, next time I import my mix, I just come over here and I grab the ones I want and put them where I need them. That's a key thing for adding your drops. You have your intros in the beginning of your mix. So here I have my mix. What I do at the beginning is I create a transition and kind of fade in at the end of my welcome message. So that's my guidance to you on that. Now let's say you have your mix in here and here's how I process it initially. So what I have here is I have a gain plug in and I just bring it down maybe a couple dBs. It just depends on how hot the mix is coming in. And then below that, I have this compressor here. Now, what this does is every time my DJ drops hit in the mix, this pulls down the DJ mix about 5 to 6 dBs. And so it's no different than what they do on radio stations or when you talk over a track. 
essentially it's called ducking. You're ducking the music lower than your most prominent signal that you want. And so that's how I have that set up. So anytime my drops hit, volume comes down. And then when the drops, you know, are over, the music comes back full blast. And then on the final chain here, we have uh, my stereo out. So I have a little compress. I have a compressor here, and it's very light compression, 1.5. All this is doing is kind of just holding back the peaks a bit in case the music is a little off level from, you know, the different different tracks maybe blending into each other. I usually do my best watching my DJ mixer, but having a piece of compression on your master bus or your stereo out never hurts. It's just gonna help tighten it up a bit. And after that, now I have my limiter. So what I do here, um, it's just a basic limiting settings, but I like to keep my output ceiling at minus 0.2 dB. And so anyway, uh, what I learned in school was that negative 0.2 dB is the best because this is how they would call it working in radio and other things as you know, bouncing off the zeros. So, and I just add whatever gain to push the signal to get to that and I watch my reduction. And then I just have a multimeter here so I can kind of see what the stereo image looks like, how bad, uh, not how bad, but I can just kind of check out the overall levels. You know, be careful of how you're recording it. You want to make sure you're recording in stereo initially. You never want to put a mono mix out there, but this will just give you that view to make sure that you did things stereo, that everything looks good. If you need to adjust the bass or whatnot, you can do that. So that is my process now. Because I've got this templated, I've been able to record a mix, and then 20, 30 minutes later, I can have all of my drops input in there, bounced, you know, add my cover art, and then I have everything posted. So in this video, I've shown you my process and things that I do to help create a DJ mix for a podcast or however you're hosting it that it can sound professional and not like an amateur did it. And I cover specific ways how to make sure the sound levels were good and quality, that your drops were in the right place and that your intros were well placed, and also understanding and making sure that you took care of the balance of the overall mix. So with these three things, I hope that you were able to get this and then you can apply it to your mixes. We want awesome mixes. We don't want lame mixes. We want our fans to enjoy and dance and turn up the music that we're putting together that we so much love. One last time, subscribe, hit that little bell, keep tuning in every week. If you've got DJ mixes or stuff similar, post them down below. I'd love to check them out because at the end of the day, I love music. I love house music. All right, that's it. That's my time. It's time to go and enjoy the great music that we love. I'm signing off.